Hello, hi, welcome back to NPTEL MOOCs course on developing soft skills and personality. This is week 8, module 3, lecture number 45. And in this module, as like in the previous module, I will continue talking about presentation skills. And in this module, particularly, I will focus on the role of body language. Now, before I start, let us take a quick review, recapture of what we did in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, I gave you a lot of tips on becoming a professional oral presenter or a public speaker. In order to become a professional, I said you need to keep certain important points in mind. What are they? View the venue, that is you go to the venue before time, experience, familiarize with the venue, welcome the viewer, identify the audience, greet them, talk to them, so that you feel kind of warmth even before talking and maintain rapport with them. Master your material, there is no shortcut to delivering the most effective presentation. If you are not thorough with the speech, if you do not take time for preparation, just do not go and give the talk. Master your material, without mastering, do not go for the talk. Calm your mind, use all breathing exercises, techniques, but then keep your mind calm, relaxed. Visualize yourself speaking and visualize yourself delivering the most uh, popular talk and then getting the standing ovation and applause from the audience. Realize people want a winning leader, so do not panic if somebody at the corner is going to ask you the most difficult questions. Be ready because people want you to answer, do not expect that somebody from the group will uh, give answer in support of you. If you are thoroughly prepared. Okay, and always when you give the presentation, keep something for the audience towards the end for the question answer session and then use those points which you have not covered before and impress the audience again during the question answer session, but do not panic okay, and people want you to become the winning leader, uh, not somebody from the audience who will criticize you or who will try to find fault with you. Avoid apologies, never say sorry at the beginning, at the end for not preparing, for feeling bad, for uh, like whatever excuse it could be that your PPT is not working properly. Do not say sorry and at least do not begin with that. Okay. Focus on your message, not the medium. If your content is good and then if you are thoroughly prepared, just focus on how well you can deliver the content, not on the way that is the way you are using some words. Okay, do not focus on the fact that whether you are saying something grammatically correct or not, that is going to hurt, harm your presentation. Audience again is not bothered, especially in public speaking, especially when you use the speech medium, they are not so particular about grammar mistakes and spelling mistakes which you are likely to commit or slight pronunciation error you are likely to commit, they are not bothered about it. In writing, spelling mistakes and uh, other grammatical errors are too glaring, but in speech people are more focused on what you are going to tell, what is the message, what do I have in this talk. For this reason, even if you have nervousness at the beginning, during, okay, try to convert that into positive energy, a little amount of nervousness is necessary to pump out the adrenaline in you, so use that. And towards the end, I said that gain experience, volunteer for giving small talks at the beginning, go ahead and give longer ones, lengthier ones and then gain the reputation of giving useful talk, effective talk and gain experience from one uh, speech to another one and become popular and make what you visualized as a reality that you will become a speaker who will get standing ovation. Now, main objectives of public speaking, I said there are four main objectives that is to entertain, to make the audience feel just enjoy your talk, educate that they learn something, provoke that they try to uh, feel provoked in terms of uh, thinking or doing something and then influencing 
influencing their thoughts, their behavior and then making them again act, do something in your favor. So, initially somebody is not influenced with your proposal, but then you convince the person to give certain amount for your uh, project. So, influencing can be in the form of getting something in your favor or even influencing them to think and then develop themselves. I also concluded by uh, saying something about how you can structure and deliver your speech. So, uh, I said that you start strongly, you can start with some uh, anecdotes, start with some startling uh, facts, okay, some interesting quotations and have just three or four major points and then learn how to elaborate them and say the first point very clearly. And when you are saying and elaborating towards the end, occasionally try to summarize okay, whatever you are saying then and there and the last conclusion is actually a summary and then you can leave them with a powerful effective quotation, so that they can think about it further. At the end of it you tell them why you delivered the talk, make it relevant for them and end it with a positive note. Okay. Now, that is about becoming a professional, but in this one, this module let us understand the role of body language in making you become a professional uh, uh, public speaker, because the role of body language is very significant, very crucial in uh, making you become the most popular public speaker. In fact, you might have seen uh, some people even come without any strong matter that is the knowledge part is very less, but the body language is so powerful, so interesting, so impactful that you are spellbound and then you do not even bother about what they are saying, but you are getting carried away by their body language. So, even body language can go to the extent of influencing people even with less content, but to become a professional, I am not saying that you should do that. You develop your body language, but at the same time go with good content, enough material that comes out of your knowledge. Now, in terms of body language and using it in public speaking, at the beginning itself steady yourself in a mirror. Okay. Today you can replace, uh, replace mirror in terms of uh, uh, video recording and then you can see that again and again, but then the best thing is still steadying yourself in a mirror, speaking before a mirror and seeing whether it is impressing you. If you yourself cannot be impressed by your own talk, you cannot impress anybody else body language reflects what you are saying and if any gesture is distractive, negative and it is not reflecting what you are saying, remove that. Dress appropriately for the occasion, I have spent enough time on dress codes, do and do in terms of interview group discussions that is appropriate here also. Uh, for example, if you have to give a talk in funeral, formal one, especially in uh, uh, foreign countries, generally they uh, come dressed in black. In an Indian scenario, generally they prefer white. Okay. Apart from the color code, so wedding you are giving a talk, so you they expect that you are in a very formal suit and all that. But let us say it is an informal talk, they want you to uh, give a talk for young kids, just to give a pep talk. So, you can be even in a t-shirt and jeans, The depending on the formal informal occasion, dress appropriately. But all the time the dress should not be a distractive element, it should merge, it should suit your personality. And while talking, relax your facial muscles, make them free and try to smile when and where it is appropriate. Pause after each main point, when you give a thought, you just give a pause, so that let them reflect on it, let them absorb the point. Eye contact initially with someone approachable is required is desired, because uh, if you are starting new, you may be bit nervous as to even look at the audience, but there are some among the audience, even your friends, your teacher, your parents, your uh, relatives, somebody is sitting there, your colleague, who is your well-wisher and just look at that person who is approachable, who is all the time nodding head for whatever you are saying. So, initially try to maintain eye contact, look at the audience, maintain eye contact with somebody approachable. This is the uh, beginning step 
And then when I talk about eye contact, avoid hiding. What do I mean by avoid hiding? Sometimes the podiums are very big. So, what people will do is they will try to lower them and then they will try to avoid. So, they do not want to uh, look at the audience and then they are very nervous, they are sweating. So, avoid looking nervous. So, try to look calm. So, courage itself is not actually means the absence of any fear. It only shows how you are able to control, manage the fear and not show it that much on your face. And look into the eyes of allies. So, people who are generally supportive, look into their eyes. But if you are uncomfortable looking into the eyes of people who are appearing to be your opponents, enemies, try to look at them on the forehead. Okay. Some people try to even go slightly lower and try to look at the nose, but on the forehead is always safe because they get a feeling that you are actually trying to maintain eye contact. But the most important of all, try to maintain eye contact with all the people. So, uh, there are uh, uh, techniques, sometimes they say that if you are really afraid of maintaining eye contact with all, they say follow the triangle method that is you look at one person in the center, so one in the corner that side, another one in this corner. But as you vary and modulate your eye contact, so people get a feeling that you are looking at all of them. Okay. Some people suggest the square method that is one in this corner, one in this corner, one in the other one and the one at this end and occasionally somebody at the center. So, that gives them a feeling that you are looking at all of them. But it is important that you need to maintain eye contact and here you need to develop a lot of courage. Sometimes when people look at you very uh, piercingly, so you may feel nervous, but then you turn, look at somebody who is more comfortable uh, maintaining eye contact with. So, turn your uh, uh, eye contact and face the other person, so that makes you feel confident. The next important thing with regard to body language is with regard to your posture and movement. So, while standing, so some people uh, they used to shift legs. What is shifting legs? So, they will move one leg and then they will come to the other one. So, that is shifting leg. So, you just shift this side and shift the other side and then do not make any frantic movement. So, moving this side first and then coming this side first, do not do that and then do not move back and forth. So, some people go back and then they come forward. So, go back and come forward. In fact, some people look as if they are dancing. So, they move here, they move there. That is just the way they are trying to handle their nervousness, but to the audience it looks very funny, ridiculous. So, you are making movements which are not required and you are trying to exhibit that you are very nervous. So, avoid these things, try to control, put the feet firm on the ground. Use open posture, so keep the hand open and use gestures with hands for emphasis. So, if you have to say something, so you can use the hand to show emphasis. Speak in a natural tone, so you do not have to speak in a falsely accented tone, so that you think that oh, if I speak like that, people will be very impressed. No, speak in a natural tone that comes normal to you and that audience will like it very much. Okay. So, try to uh, keep that in mind and some more do's and do not all the time try to face the audience okay. and look at each person in the audience once you develop some confidence. If you are using notes okay, and if you have to look at the notes, look at the notes only occasionally, what does it mean? You will not look at the notes all the time and read it so that you cut the eye contact between the audience and you that is disastrous. So, they will lose interest in your talk. So, look at the notes, but you should be very thorough with what is there in your notes. So, that is where your preparation comes and when you are prepared so thoroughly, what you have in notes is just a kind of reminder, okay. it is just a memory recall. So, you have written some important phrases, so you look at them occasionally to check whether you have missed any point but you will not see everything and read it uh, to the audience. That is a bad thing to do because you lose eye contact and smile and then as I said the radiating smile that is very important. And if you are using a PowerPoint, 
there is another tendency like if the mouse is kept. So, while moving you may just look at the mouse carefully and then you may press it. Either you practice that you uh, uh, handle the mouse even without looking at it. So, become an expert in that or get someone else to click the mouse, okay, do not use it at all or use a remote. So, nowadays you have got remote for moving PPT. So, use the remote, keep that remote in the hand and try to do that. Now, in terms of uh, do's and do not again with the body language particularly do not. So, do not hold on to anything. Now, let us say the podium is there, in your fear do not hold on this, okay, do not hold the mic so firmly. So, do not hold on your handbag, file. Okay. So, that indicates again you are nervous. So, people are really afraid like what to do. So, they will try to hold on to the chair that is kept. Suppose there is a bench, again they hold on to the bench. And then when you either use a PowerPoint or use a notes, do not read directly from that. So, do not look at it and read word by word. You are thorough and they are there just as a kind of uh, refreshing points. Okay, so, you do not have to read from that and do not keep looking at the screen. So, if you are again giving PPT all the time looking at the screen, so that will also make audience lose eye contact with you. If there is a professor who is examining you or there is an examiner as in case of Viva and some uh, project presentations. So, you have a tendency to look at only the professor. So, the audience is sitting completely here. So, many students and other staff, other faculty are there, but you look at only the examiners thinking that you should convince only them. That is again another aspect of nervousness. In fact, you should actually forget that the examiners are sitting. You should look at them as if you are looking at them as one of the audience looking so much and only on the examiner will make them feel embarrassed and uh, some people do not like you looking at them because they know that you are feeling nervous and then or they know that you are trying to impress them by looking at them. So, try to avoid that. In terms of voice quality, let us look at some do's and do not s. Voice quality, speak loudly and clearly. So, in fact, expert speakers, professionals, the first thing they will do is they will check the mic, okay, if at all it is there. If mic is not there, they will ask the audience on the last row whether they are able to hear them. So, they will ask am I audible to you, can you hear me, okay, am I audible. If say if somebody says yes you are audible, I can hear you, then they go ahead. If they say they cannot hear they increase the volume in the mic or they try to speak louder. So, speak loudly and clearly, enunciate that means say each and every word, do not mumble, do not skip, do not speak in a hurry, speak slowly but with confidence. So, some people are afraid of speaking slowly because they think that uh, it, it they will reveal their nervousness. It is important to emphasize important points by slowing down and or speaking louder. So, when you slow also people will try to follow what you are going to say and when you raise your voice again people know that you are saying something important. And if you are giving a group presentations like 5 people giving one presentation for a common project that you did. So, each one speaks for let us say uh, 5 minutes. Now, once your turn is over, so you can say, so now, my friend so and so will come and talk about this part or you can say so far I have talked about this aspect of uh, this project, but this project has four other aspects. The next one my friend so and so will come and uh, discuss with you. So, give transition to the next speaker especially in team presentation. So, that makes audience to follow it smoothly. What should not you do in terms of voice quality? Race through your speech okay, as, as if you are sitting in super fast train. So, some people just they want to finish the speech as quick as possible so that their nervousness is over. No, but as you race you commit more mistakes, but as you are slow and deliberate you are able to remain calm and collected. 
So, do not think that you will race through your speech and then uh, get it done quickly with less mistakes, but it could be the other way around. And some people uh, as I said try to read directly from notes and screen and you should never do that. Never talk too fast and never talk deliberately too slow also. Some people have not prepared okay, even for a 10 minutes talk. So, it has been told that you have to speak full 10 minutes otherwise marks will be detected. So, only 2 minutes idea gets dragged till 10 minutes and they speak very del deliberately slowly and mumbling is like saying something only you can hear. So, your lips are sort of whispering, but nobody can hear and never exceed the time limit. Nobody will accuse you if you finish your lecture before time, if you finish the public speech before the time given. But if you exceed the time limit, people will be unhappy. And then never do this mistake of saying as like most teachers try to do that. They will say that just one more minute, I am going to finish this. So, 10 minutes are over and they will say just another off minute. So, another 15 minutes will go. So, that one minute sometimes can extend up to one hour and you know you are killing the audience to death. So, and they will start looking at the watch. So, they will make lot of uh, restless body movement and some people if they can afford to do, they will even walk out, they would not mind going out. So, when you say some time limit, so stick to the time limit and do not exceed the time limit. Now, towards the last few points, the most important thing that you should not do at all is never turn back on audience. So, even for writing something, showing something on the board. So, even when you do that, one part of your face, okay, at least one eye should be maintaining the contact turning completely on the back and slouching as if like you are so weak and then you are not prepared. So, that again uh, leaves a very bad impression and keep the hand open, do not put the hands in uh, pockets that again becomes a very bad defensive gesture. In fact, one of the crucial question that people ask in terms of public speaking oral presentation is that what to do with my hands. Okay. As I have said before, do not put it in your pocket. If you are nervous, you can slightly rest the palms, but not holding it firmly. Okay. You can just rest it for some time, but once you are relaxed, once you feel that now I am okay, then open the palms to show that you are confident and then you have nothing to hide, you are giving a very truthful and honest talk, you are thoroughly prepared. So, you are not afraid of anybody. Avoid inserting them in pockets, keeping them on the back or crossing hands and giving a talk, all the time crossing the hands and giving a talk. So, you are completely losing your uh, nonverbal touch. Now, the best gesture is anything that correlates the verbal part of communication. So, whatever you say if you are able to correlate that, so that will be the best gesture. So, people even when they mute it, okay, let us say they are watching your thing on the video and if they mute it and if they see, so they should be able to more or less guess what you are trying to say. So, if you can use that, that is the best form of uh, communication and the best way to use it. At the end of it, I would like to say when you when you use your uh, hand and especially the body movement in communication including both verbal and non verbal i would say that be spontaneous like a child okay the child doesn't bother uh, like the way it moves its hand but then all the time it's trying to communicate with you and if you are close to the child even before it says something you know that it likes you it doesn't like you it wants it it doesn't want it okay and then it knows what to grab, what to throw. And the hand gestures, the leg movement, they are all coming very spontaneously and very naturally. In fact, if you can come using this very spontaneously and in a very natural manner, whether it is in public speaking or in oral presentation or in group discussion or in interview, the one who is spontaneous and natural is the one who will be selected. 
they don't want people who are nervous who are afraid who cannot handle nervousness before uh, the interview panel before public and when you become spontaneous you will also enjoy the talk that you are delivering now as a concluding thought from a famous poet maya angelo pay attention to what she says she says i have learned that people will forget what you said this means the verbal part of your uh, talk may be completely forgotten people will forget what you did okay so even the non verbal part the hand gesture and all that so even that can be forgotten how he how you try to communicate so that also people may forget but there is another aspect to this but people will never forget how you make them feel at the end of the talk if it was a very uh, powerful talk did you move them emotionally did you express your passion and make them feel passionate did what you felt at your heart went through your tongue and then reached them and touched their heart too okay. if you can assure that and at the end of it overall if they feel good the feel good factor that i listen to this person but i feel very good i am happy that i listen to this person so that is the emotional spiritual quotient part that will ultimately distinguish you from rest of any other speakers any other persons who are going to give that interview that giving that feel good factor the the last one at the end of it they feel that okay i'm i'm feeling good my heart is full after listening to this because people will forget all other things but they will remember how you made them feel okay feel about that think about it and then uh, let me say bye thank you so much for uh, watching this video i'll come back to you with one more uh, module on uh, presentation as how to use visuals thank you once again